Okay, Shalom, Shalom, it's the Brother Kadash. I want to start off by giving our praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak Kadash. This is going to be Christianity, you know, has done great evils. And that's a quote. It's the title of the video, but that's a quote from this man. This is Joe Rogan. This is just fair use for research, research purposes only. You know, fair use, research purposes only. You know, I'm not making any money off this or anything like that. But this is on the Joe Rogan show. And, you know, I was watching it. And this professor or doctor or, or, you know, whatever his title is, he was on here and he was speaking about some things that had caught my attention. And I wanted to, you know, bring it to your to you guys attention, you know, but what he was saying is, is that Christianity has done some horrible things because really it backfired on Esau. Right. So we know during the Renaissance, you know, which means rebirth, you know, when Esau came back into power, you know, you have something called italicism where Esau went and he destroyed a lot of information and he, you know, tampered with a lot of information, you know, going to the Native Americans over here in America, which we know are Israelites, you know, um, most likely the Northern Kingdom. He, what he did, and I had did a video on this back then, you know, it was on the History Channel, how the Spaniards came over here and pretty much they went to war with the Aztecs, right? And one of the things they did is they went into their libraries, but it happened with the Mayans too, you know? And it's a reason why, because that was the movement, but it really backfired on Esau, and I'm going to tell you how it backfired on them. So they went into their libraries, and they burned all their books, all their documents, they, and, then, and then they told them that their gods were demons, you know, which with which, which some of them they were worshipping false gods, you know, because they were still going off. You know, we know the feathered serpent is just a portrayal of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, you know, but told them that they guys were demons and then they um, converted them to being Catholic. So now when you look at the Aztecs today, which are which, you know, are known as the Mexicans, you know, for the most part um, today, you know, you go to Mexico, if you actually go to Mexico, you know, you will see a lot of idolatry. You will see a lot of of that iconicism, the the whitewashing, you will see a lot of, all the prophets who are going to look like Edomites, you know, you'll see them worshiping the Pope, which is an Edomite, you know, rather than somebody that looks like themselves or looks like an Israelite, you know, from the tribe of Judah, you know, so you will see that going on because they've been adulterated and this is what he speaks about, but this is how it backfired on them because the information that was in those documents that they was Stealing, covering up, because you you go to the Vatican City, they got a lot of that stuff still. They still got a lot of that stuff in secret places, and they be reading, they be knowing what's going on. They just not going to release it to the public, you know. But all those things are going to be revealed. The closer and closer we get to our Lord coming back, those things are going to start to be revealed, right? But the ancient um, methods to do things, which were like great, you know, in the technology, and they really want to figure out how the pyramids was built. They really want to figure out how the Mayan pyramid was built with such accuracy. They really want to find out if these civilizations, they call them, back in the day, you know, were um, really more technical events than um, than even America today, Mystery Babylon today. They want to figure out some of those secrets, but they burned them all and they covered up a lot of them all and they stole a lot of them all. So really, it's in this way you're going to speak on, so I'm going to let it play diseases and they carry diseases this is the thing the uh, oriana encountered thriving highly populated areas a hundred years later all gone completely gone not because of muskets and swords but because of smallpox primarily because of smallpox and other diseases that were imported from europe that the indigenous inhabitants did not have resistance to yeah because the edomite man filthy dirty a base man right and it's the same thing which he's going to speak on that happened over here to our brothers right our people you know the native americans and uh, mexicans which are israelites you know um they come from the 12 tribes of israel it's the same thing that happened to them you know how did how did they take down the aztecs how did they take down the native americans in the exact same way look at i mean look at the coincidence you know yeah they used guns and they had superior weapons and stuff like that because the Lord blessed them with a sword, right? If you go to Genesis 27, which I'm about to go to, you know, Esau was blessed with that sword, right? But there's other ways to go to war, you know? And um, and one of those ways is biological, you know? And that's, that's all I'm going to say on that, you know? <laughs> um, but what they did is, 
as you know, with the small impossible, which I'm, I'm going to let him say it, you know, I'm going to let him say it for research purposes, you know, it was, it wiped out and it completely committed genocide, what they did, you know, and that helped them. But how did that happen though? That happened by the way of the Lord, because it's all to fulfill prophecy. So really the Lord gave them that power to do that. The Lord set that up. The Lord directed them over here. The Lord put it in their heart for them to come over here and do that. Those, all those Israelites that died from the biological war that he's about to speak on, the, the Lord, the Lord killed them. The Lord took them out. Like I said, because they were being wicked too. So it's the same thing that you see today with the whole um, parable. Uh, really ain't a parable, but the truth, the prophecy actually about the two thirds. So if you think that's bad, look what the Lord's about to do to his people today. He's going to wipe out two thirds here in America, man. This is Genesis 27 verse 32. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, the firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who, where is he that has taken Venice and has um, brought it to me? Now, yeah, Isaac had this great love for Esau because it's just like us today, right? You get a son and he and he's running around and he's jumping. Y'all play wrestling. You take your son everywhere with you. Um, you build him up to be strong. You know what I mean? It's nothing like the love between a father and a son. There's nothing like it. I mean, that's and that goes all the way, all the way up to Yahweh, our father and his first begotten son, Yahweh Shai. There's nothing like it, right? Um, so you, you love him because he's wild and, you know, he do this and do that. You can have fun. You ain't got to be so gentle with him like if you have a daughter. So that's kind of why he loved Esau because that was Esau's nature, right? It says, now, let's keep going. It says, I have eaten all before thy cometh and have blessed him. Yeah, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry. And said unto his father, bless me, even me also, my father. But he has sold his birthright, right? And it says, and it says, and he said, thy brother came with sub subtility and has taken away thy blessing. Verse 36. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted, that's what the name means, me these two times. He took away my birthright and behold, now he has taken away my blessings. But Esau still going to get blessed. Now watch with what? And he said, has thou not reserved the blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. When is that going to be fulfilled? Has it been fulfilled before? Yes. But even at the end, it's going to be fulfilled. That's what the kingdom is about. It says, And all his brethren have I given to him for servants. Really, it's just breaking down all the rest of the nations are going to be um, servants, right? Under the Israelites. It says, And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing? My father bless me, even me also, O, o my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And I said his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling should be the fatness of the earth. So what do we see right now with the Edomites, right? They have power over the earth, right? It says um, they trying to get a one world um, order, right? One world government. That's that power, you know, they allies, they come together, They uh, the Europeans, like he's explaining, the Americans, which is just Europeans too, um, you know, they come from Great Britain and, and stuff like that, um, Germans, and you know, they trace their lines back, it says, all the way up to Esau, by the way, it says, of the dew of heaven from above, they got power over the skies, right, to tell you who, what flies on is what, and, and, they, and they have superior, when it comes to their army, they have superior power over the skies than any um than, than any israelites you know it says and by the and says and by the sword should i live so when they came to america what did they have the sword the gun so they was blessed with that it's not that they better or anything or they just got lucky no it goes all the way back to esau they were blessed with having that sword and that's how they was able to get control of what you know of today as the united states which is known as mystery babylon in the bible Right, it says, um, let's keep going. Um, and shall serve thy brother. So, even though they bless with that sword, it's still gonna come a time where they're gonna serve us, right? It says, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion 
that thou should break his yoke off from thy neck, which they did. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. So that's an ancient hatred because it goes back to when he was in the womb. It says, behold, you have two nations in you, right? And one should be better than the other. So Esau did, you know, break that yoke and then they came into power, right? That's why we just broke up. And then, but it happened multiple times, though. It, it has happened multiple times, right? And one of the times is what I just brung up, the Renaissance. You know, it was a dark ages for them, you know, because the, your, the Lord had put that chain on them, right? And they had came up out of it, you know? And then they had a rebirth. And that's going into what he's going to talk about because some of these things happen, right? Now, this is Malachi 1 right verse one the burden of the word of the lord to israel by malachi i have loved you say the lord yet ye say wherein hast thou loved us was not esau jacob's brother say the lord yet i love jacob and i have hated esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness where edom say we are improvised but we will return and build the desolate places now you might say oh this happened right here in the bible it, ha it has happened multiple times and one of the times it also happened, just like the curses of doing the modern 28, it don't mean that they happen one time and they're over and they're fulfilled. Those curses continue coming back, continue coming back and continue happening into the kingdom of heaven. It says, whereas Edom say we are privileged, but we return and build the desolate places. They also did this after the dark ages. It says, thus say the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against the Lord has indignation for forever. So it's this thing that's happening forever all the way leading up to the kingdom of heaven. So they did come back and they build. They did come back and take um take the land of um Canaan, the um Americas and Canada, right? And they did um rebuild a place called Mystery Babylon the Great. The greatest, richest um place ever to be known on earth. And the Lord said, look, they going to build, but he going to throw down. And that's fulfillment of the prophecy because that sword that Esau was blessed with, the Lord is going to take that sword from him. And you can look this up in Isaiah 34. He's going to take that sword and then he's going to use it against him. By the way of what? The second death, which is fire and brimstone, which is going to come by the way of what? Nuclear missiles, fire. World War Three is the Lord's plan. He's setting that up in order for this place, Mystery Babylon, to be destroyed by those nuclear missiles. So therefore, all that bloodshed, all those Israelites, Native Americans, that was that blood was shed on this American land, it's going to be a great sacrifice and a great cleansing of this land. Just completely decimated those civilizations, almost wiped them completely from human memory. And there's a judgment for that. You can't just try to escape your judgment, but it says in Jeremiah 49 that they want, they want to try to escape that judgment, but they can't. There's no doubt that the, 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 that biological weapon is the reason for the conquest of the Americas, that it was the diseases that were brought in. And in some cases, those diseases were deliberately spread, but in other cases, they, they, it was just an accident of contact. And that's the exact same thing that happened in North America. And that's the exact same thing that happened in North America, too. That's how it, that's how it became so easy for Europeans to, to conquer, because of the diseases they brought with them. And it is, I, you know, I call it the earliest, the earliest known. Graham Hancock, you know, so he's either like a, a scholar or whatever you want to say. Let's just call him a scholar, right? A scholar. And this is the information that I'm getting from this scholar and it's fair use. Example of a biological weapon uh, that we're that we're seeing in the story of the Americas, and so much was wiped out, so much memory was wiped out, and then not just the killing off of the people with the diseases that Europeans brought, but the church, the way that the the, the way that the church behaved in the Americas was appalling. The the, the deliberate burning of of Mayan codices, in one bonfire, five thousand Mayan books were heaped up and burnt by some idiot priest. You know. What's he doing there but wiping out the memory banks of humanity? Now, what listen to what he said. He said one burning. It was 5,000 of them. Books. Now, imagine just all the information, right, in those books that was burned up and wiped away. Now, he's saying this idiot, why would he do that? But that priest during that time, he was thinking, you know, 
and I know, and I'm saying this through the spirit, right? Um, he probably was thinking, let's say that, say it that way, that um, he was hiding that information. So the people that they was taking and burning the information from, they wouldn't be able to get the information no more. So they wouldn't be in power, which, you know, is all a part of Psalms 83, which our enemies coming together to consult against us, you know, to take away our heritage, to take away our understanding, our wisdom and knowledge. So we don't know who we are. That's why he did that. So a place like Mystery Babylon could be built up and because the Lord put the spirit on them to do it. In what would we have found in those manuscripts if we'd been able to find them today, if they hadn't been burnt by some religious fanatic who was convinced that his ideas were the only right ideas and everybody else was wrong? Well, the lie and the gig would have been up because what you would have found in them is you would have found out that they are Israelites. You would have found out that the um, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans are the true Israelites on earth, the Lord's chosen people. You would have found that out. And they would have found that out. We would have knew it. We would have knew that we had to come together. And you would have found out who our Lord was. And it would have went against everything that y'all was teaching. That y'all still, that the Catholic Church th teaches to this day. Christianity is responsible for a great deal of harm in this world. And it's time Christians sucked it up and got to grips with that. Instead of regarding themselves as, as a paragon of virtue. Because Christianity has done horrific things down through the ages. Hopefully it's learned from its experiences. And no, they have not. You know? Because now the Israelites are waking up and they're trying to suppress, suppress us. But really, they should be spreading everything we say because it's the truth, right? You know, but, you know, they doing the same thing, you know. But, you know, Christianity is one thing and a Christian is two different things, even though they try to make it seem like it's the same thing. It's no different than you got people on the earth calling themselves Jews that are not, like it says in the Bible, Revelations 2 and 9. You got people calling themselves Christians that are not because the only way you could be a Christian it's if you're an Israelite, meaning that you come from the man Israel, you come from the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the only way you could be a true Christian. This is Acts 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So the disciples, you know, which were all Israelites, right? That were all Israelites. They were Israelites by blood. They came from one of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Benjamin, Jacob, right? I mean, Benjamin, Judah, right? They were called Christians. So that's who the actual Christians is. That's who follows um, a follower of um, Christ, a follower of Amashiach, is the Israelites. Even though when we get in the kingdom, we must say this, man. The whole world is going to have to follow our law, statutes, and commandments because we're going to be empowered. The same way that the whole world follows Mystery Babylon, America that's empowered, the whole world wants to be like it and copy off of it, right? That's going to be the same thing in the kingdom. Now, just because they have to worship our king and just because they are forced to follow our law, statutes, commandments do not mean that they inherit the blessing in Genesis 27 that was given to Jacob. Jacob has his blessing in Genesis 27, and Esau has his blessing. Esau's not going to get Jacob's blessing. That's what Christianity is teaching. That Let's just take Esau and Jacob. They're teaching that Esau had his blessing, but now, that e that now Esau can get Jacob's blessing. No, Esau got his blessing. That's why he wept a lot, because he wanted a blessing. His father gave him his blessing. His blessing is playing out. And a part of his blessing was what? That he was going to serve his brother. This is how you understand the Bible. That's a part of his blessing. So you can't say, well, no, that, that, that's um, void. He's not going to serve his brother no more. And now he could be saved to inherit the kingdom. No, the kingdom is Jacob's blessing. Right? Because when Esau and Jacob came out the womb, Jacob hand held the heel of Esau and that was a representation of something what was it that was a representation that Esau would have his blessing first and then Jacob blessing would come after Esau's blessing 
Esau blessing would be what? Mystery Babylon. Ruling the world. And then when does Jacob blessing come? That comes when our Lord returns and then you have something called the kingdom of heaven. That's when Jacob's blessing comes. Then let's get that. I see online a video, you know, with some Christians and they was talking about the whole Hebrew Israelite thing and how they need to prepare themselves and they need to get in the Bible and have group studies and stuff like that. But it's never going to work for you. You guys are never going to. I think they was in Detroit and they need to chill out because, I mean, um, there's some strong brothers out there teaching in Detroit. If I'm if I'm um, if I'm correct, I think Wi-Fi cold cuts is out there. And um, they they was talking about going out on the highways and byways. And if you run into a Hebrew Israelite, just look, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> if y'all Christian, wacky, tacky Christians go out there and y'all try to go and debate with in Detroit, if I'm correct, I believe they're in Detroit. They got a big group in Detroit. Um, and y'all try to go debate with Wi-Fi cold cut. It's not going to work out for you. And this is one of the reasons why it's not going to work out for you because Y'all not going to get into the Apocrypha. And the Apocrypha gives you a major advantage, right? Because it has a lot of details and, um, and it's biblical, right? So really, y'all don't eat the whole roll. You have to eat the whole roll like it says in Ezekiel chapter three, uh, 3. Yeah, you got to eat the whole roll. So if you don't eat the whole roll, it's, it's just not going to work out for you. Now, this is 2nd Edger 6 and 9. 2nd Edger 6 and 7. Get some context, right? They always like to say that. And we we, we the ones that go into context because we the ones that go into definition of words. Like, I seen this wacky, tacky Christian dude, and he was talking about the Hebrew Israelites. And he was like, yeah. And they want to talk about Deuteronomy 28, 68. They want to talk about Egypt. But then they say that it's not literal. But then they say that the ships is literal. Because what the fuck else is a ship going to to say what a, if we bro it's it's about this it's about going to the definitions of words so he was saying look they just pick and choose which one is literal or not no that's not true a ship if you go into the def definition of if you use um bible blue book or whatever it's called um blue letter right if you go to there where it says ship and you go to the strongest definition of it it's going to get back to it's going to come back pretty much roughly paraphrase it to a ship what we know of as a ship today it's about going in deeper, right, to understand the Bible. It's written in code, parables, right? Now, if you go to that word Egypt, Egypt breaks down to what? The house of bondage. So it all makes sense, man. That's why we call y'all wacky tacky because y'all do shit in a wacky way. Okay, but 2nd Ezra chapter 6, in reality, we're the real Christians, Right. But we know that during that time, the ancient what well, the holy tongue was paleo Hebrew, ancient Hebrew. So you have to actually say the word in Hebrew to say it correctly, just like with the Lord's name. You call it on his name, but you could call on the name Jesus all you want. But guess what? That's not the name of the Lord. That's not the name. I mean, just just think about this. If you are sincere. Um, wacky tacky Christian, just ask yourself this question. Did our Lord, did his mother and did his mother Mary and did his father Joseph call him Jesus? They they got the name, right? Through the spirit and they named their son, right? Now, what name was that that was given to them to name their son? What is that name? What did they call him? What did his brothers call him? That's like me growing up right now today, right? My brothers and everything call me by a name that my mother and my father named me. Then, 2,000, 3,000 years down the road, they didn't rename me because language didn't change. And they say, oh, his name is not Kadash. His name is not Kadash. His name is um, Tokyo. Let's just throw some shit out there. His name is Tokyo or, or whatever, right? Or, 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 matter of fact, let's just, let's just say, let's just give you an actual example. Let's not be wacky like the Christians, right? Um, let's just say they say his name is holy. Kadash means holy, right? Kadash means holy, right? And then they say his name is holy. We, 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 we pray in the holy, but you're not praying to my name. My name is Kadash. You see what I'm saying? So you have to go into the language, just like if you're dealing with, um, if you're dealing with Arabs. 
They're going to give you their name. They're going to say, this is my name in their language. Now, you can translate it to English, but you're not calling their name. You know, let's keep going. Second address, six and nine. Um, and you can say, well, no, nah, this is your name, because this is how you say it in English. They're going to say, fuck off. My name is whatever it is in their language that they speak that they was named in. Vladimir Putin, right? If I said his name correctly. What is his name? Are, are, are we going to translate that name to an English name? That that would be Russian. If I'm if I'm correct, that would be Russian, right? So when you say Putin, you're calling him by his name, his Russian name in the Russian language. When you when you refer to the um the premier in China, their president, their king, right? You gonna say, oh, let's just say, um, let's give you an example with Kim Jong Un of North Korea. Do you translate his name and say, okay, let's translate it to how it would be in English. The meaning, whatever the meaning of his name is, what's that meaning in English? And call him that? No, you call him Kim Jong-un, whatever his name is, based off the, what he was named in his language. So what would be the Lord name? It would be in Hebrew, what he was named in Hebrew. That would be his actual name, which he has given to us through the spirit today, which is Yahweh Shai. Because it means he saves, he delivers. Right? Um, the second address six and nine, verse seven. Second address six, verse seven, sorry. It says, Um, then answer I and said, What shall be the parting and sunder of times? And when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow? So the end and then the beginning of that follow, what is that talking about? The end of this world, that's why we say we're in the end times right now, right? And then there's a world that's gonna follow after, which we know we call the kingdom of heaven, right? It says, and he said unto me, from Abraham and to Isaac, when Jacob, so that's a bloodline. He's telling you this is who it's for. It's from Abraham, not for Ishmael, because it says that in um, Galatians chapter 4. Ishmael cannot be joint heirs to the kingdom. That's the whole Arabs, right? If They, they cannot be joint heirs because Ishmael is not in it. It says from Abraham to Isaac. When Jacob and Esau was born, so now he gets down to Jacob and Esau. Jacob hand held first the hill of Esau. That was a representation. And this is the representation that it meant. Verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, right? That means that what? What is it talking about? It goes back to Genesis 27, Esau's blessing. He came out first, so he had his blessing first. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Because the same way that Esau came out first and then Jacob came out after, Esau had his kingdom first. His blessing that his father Isaac gave him, and then Jacob's blessing is going to come after, which is after the end of this world, which is the kingdom. That simple. No way around it. You know, so, you know, just pretty much breaking down um, some things through the spirit, and uh, hopefully it's been edifying. With that, I'm going to say salvation to the election. Lord.